Good morning children. Today we shall learn about chemical effects of electric current and electroplating. First, let us do a fun experiment. Take half a potato, a cell and a LED. Now, put two pieces of copper wire in the potato. Keep little distance between them, say 1 to 2 cm. We connect positive terminal of the cell to the copper wire in the potato. The negative terminal of the cell gets connected to the shorter wire or the shorter lead of the LED. Now, we connect other piece of the copper wire to the longer wire or the longer lead of the LED to complete the circuit. What do you see? You will see the LED will glow. Keep it like this for some time. After some time, a greenish blue spot appears in the spot where positive end of the cell is connected. This chemical change was caused by electricity. We don't see such chemical changes when metal carries the electricity. Wire just gets hot with time because of heating effect. But there is no chemical change. In 1800, William Nicholson showed that if we pass electricity through water, bubbles of oxygen and hydrogen are produced. You know, water molecule is made of oxygen and hydrogen. So, water molecule breaks down into hydrogen and oxygen. Not only water, Molecules of other electrolytes are also broken down while we pass electricity through it. This chemical change is called electrolysis. You must have seen gold-plated jewellery. Silver or any other cheap metal is coated with gold to make it look like gold. Look at this shiny new bicycle and this shiny tap. If accidentally it gets scratched, we would find that there is another metal beneath it. Which means there is a shiny coating of metal on another metal. We can't just make this kind of coating the way we paint an object. This is done with the help of electrolysis process. Here we have an iron key. It will get rust on it someday. But if we coat it with other metal like copper, nickel etc which doesn't get rust, we can use the lock and key for a long time. How to deposit copper on iron to get copper coating? We need a small copper plate or piece, an electrolyte which is copper compound like copper sulphate, 2-3 cells for electricity supply and some electric wires. First, we make copper sulphate solution. Now, we connect the key to the battery using a wire. Then, we put the key in the solution. Now, we connect the copper piece to the other end of the battery using a wire and put the copper piece in the solution. We can add a switch in the circuit instead of directly connecting the copper plate to the battery. That way we can stop the electricity flow anytime. After we start the electricity flow, copper gets deposited on the key and forms a shiny brown coating. You will also observe copper plate starts to decay. So let us understand what is going on. When electric current is passed through the copper sulphate solution, copper sulphate dissociates into copper and sulphate. The free copper gets drawn into the electrode connected to the negative terminal of the battery and gets deposited on it. But what about the loss of copper from the solution? Well, from the other electrode, a copper plate, an equal amount of copper gets dissolved in the solution. 
Thus, the loss of copper from the solution is restored and the process keeps going. This means that copper gets transferred from one electrode to the other. Molecules of electrolyte break down into ions which are charged particles and they are responsible for the flow of electricity through the liquid. So, copper sulphate breaks down into copper and sulphate ions. Copper ion is positively charged so it gets attracted to the key which is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. There it gets electrons and turns into copper atom and gets deposited on the key. Now copper plate supplies the solution with copper ions to compensate copper ion deficiency. That is why the copper strip starts to decay. You know to get a nickel plating on the key we can use piece of nickel instead of piece of copper at the positive terminal and we use compound having nickel as electrolyte for example nickel chloride nickel sulfate etc this process of depositing a layer of any desired metal on another material by means of electricity is called electroplating we can electroplate iron with zinc tin nickel to make iron objects more durable chromium plating is done on many objects such as car parts bath taps kitchen gas burners bicycle handlebars wheel rims and many other because chromium has a shiny appearance and it does not corrode also it resists scratches but chromium is expensive and it may not be economical to make the whole object out of chromium we make the object from a cheaper metal and only a coating of chromium over it is deposited you know tin cans used for storing food are also made by electroplating tin onto iron why because tin is less reactive than iron thus food does not come into contact with iron and is protected from getting spoiled iron is also used for making bridges and automobile to provide strength but as we know iron tends to corrode and rust so what is the solution again a coating of zinc is deposited on iron to protect it from corrosion and formation of rust so to sum up what we learned today the passage of an electric current through a conducting liquid causes chemical reactions the resulting effects are called chemical effects of currents the process of depositing a layer of any desired metal on other material by means of electricity is called electroplating that's all for now bye bye